Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. Okay, welcome back. Let's dive back into Matthew chapter 9. But we're doing that, of course, in a more detailed version of the same story in Mark chapter 5. I'd like to uh, look at Mark chapter 5 and verse number 37. Um, Jesus has just received the news that this little daughter of Jairus, 12 years old, who was at the point of death minutes before, uh, now she's dead. And he tells Jairus, don't be afraid, keep on believing. And so off they go to, to get to Jairus' house. He's a synagogue official. Verse 37, he allowed no one to accompany him except Peter, James, John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the synagogue official. He saw a commotion, people loudly weeping and wailing. Well, it is tragic. Oh, my goodness. It is tragic when a child dies. Um, tragic doesn't even seem to be a... a, a a word that does it justice when a child dies. My understanding is in Christ's day, um, people actually hired professional mourners uh, when someone died just to weep and wail. Uh, for what reason, I don't know, just to express uh, a greater sorrow for the loss of their loved one. I don't know if these were hired weepers and wailers or not. I would almost think that you wouldn't have to hire anybody to weep and wail when a 12-year-old little girl dies. Question. Jesus healed this little girl. Uh, why didn't Jesus prevent her from ever getting sick? Why didn't Jesus prevent her from ever dying? I mean, God up in heaven knows everything. God up in heaven knew she was sick. God up in heaven could have stopped her from becoming ill or ever dying. And uh, I don't know the answer. I don't know anyone who knows the answer to these things. I mean, we just don't know. Uh, but rather than focusing on these things that we don't understand, let's focus on the things that God has revealed to us. And this does have a happy ending. This little girl was healed and raised from the dead. And it has something to do with the fact that her father went to Jesus and believed that Jesus could and would intervene on her behalf. Okay, and that, I wish I knew more. You know, I wish I had all the answers. I do. But let's, again, focus on what we do understand. Entering in, Jesus said to them in verse 39, Why make a commotion and weep? The child has not died, but is asleep. They began laughing at him. But putting them all out, he took along the child's father and mother and his own companions and entered the room where the child was. I've always thought that Perhaps the reason that Jesus shuffled everybody else out of there, all those weepers and wailers, is because they were uh, uh, full of unbelief. They were laughing at Jesus when he said that she's asleep, you know, um, and, you know, they're not going to be encouraging Jairus to believe that his daughter is going to be resurrected, Right. Right, so sometimes it's just good to get the unbelief out or get away from the unbelief. If people are giving you, you know, negative reports or filling you with doubts in regard to something that you're trusting God for, whether it be healing or something else, <clears throat> I would uh, recommend, uh, you know, keeping away from them as much as possible. You know, in order to have faith, you you've got to feed yourself with good positive things, the Word of God, the promise of God, and you want to starve your doubts and, and get away from those who are causing you to doubt. So get all the unbelief out of there, okay? He entered the room uh, uh, where the child was, verse number 40. Now 41, taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which translated means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Now he was talking to a dead body. Uh, one thing that people have missed on this, not only did Jairus have faith, but uh, Jesus did too. All right? And immediately the girl got up and began to walk, for she was 12 years old. 
And immediately, they were completely astounded. You know, Mark's always throwing this word immediately in there throughout his gospel. Everything happens immediately. And Jesus gave them strict orders that no one should know about this. And he said that something should be given to her to eat. And so there's the completion of the story and the wonderful miracle that uh, Jairus was trusting for. It's interesting, I think, that in the four Gospels, you really can't find any adult being healed as a direct result uh, and the sole result of a, uh, another person's faith unless that person is a child. There's one exception, the story of the man lowered to the roof, but the Bible says Jesus saw their faith, okay? So it was the faith of all five of them. But as far as someone being healed as a result of someone else's faith, you, know, you cannot find an example of where an adult was healed as a result of the faith of another adult, and there was no uh, expectation, no requirement of faith on the part of this individual who was ultimately healed. You can find stories like this where children were healed as a result of the faith of their parent or guardian. All right, So that should encourage us. You say, well, how can my little child have faith, you know, to be healed. Well, it doesn't seem that God requires uh, that of children, at least up to a certain age, and that parents can effectively pray and have faith for the healing of their children. I want to say this as compassionately as I possibly can, as and as sensitively as I possibly can. This is not a message that's to condemn anybody who's tried and failed. This is not a message to tell anybody to um, you know, try to extend themselves beyond what they are able to. We hear some of these tragic stories of parents who quit giving their diabetic children insulin and their children died, and they did it under the banner of faith. Well, uh, something went wrong there, and I have to tell you, I'm not going to point my finger at God and say God did something wrong. Uh, something was wrong on the side of the parents. So there's much more that we could talk about. It's a sensitive issue, I understand, but let's again focus on the positive aspects of all this. Let's see this as one more case where faith brought a miracle. Amen. We know that scripture tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. So I've determined that to the best that I can, I'm going to be a believer. Have I failed? Yes, but I'm going to get back up and keep on believing. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.